Hey, what's happening guys? Today I'm going to answer a question that I've been getting a lot. How exactly do you choose the components to bias a transistor? Well, it all depends on what you want to do. So I'm just going to do this as an example. This is not a uh, be-all or end-all or anything of that nature. Focus. There we go. So <clears throat> what we have here is basically your simple common collector amplifier. Small signal goes in here larger signal comes out here. So in order to start biasing it we need to know what the variables in our circuit are. We need to know our load and we're going to say in this case it's going to be 3 kilo ohm load. Our VCC is 10 volts. Our HFE is 100 and our 3 dB frequency point is going to be 100 Hertz. So with those things in mind we have to start out by choosing our, what our quiescent current is going to be. That's your first step. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but we're just going to do something really simple. And we're just going to say that we want IQ to be 1 milliamp. That's a, that's a safe quiescent current for just about any uh, standard NPN trans, transistor. Next, we need to select our VE, that is our voltage at the emitter, all right? And our VE, we want to be one half of VCC, okay? That will allow us the largest possible symmetric output, so it can swing, you know, symmetrically both ways without clipping so in this case that is going to be 5 volts so now that we have these couple of pieces of information we can start thinking and we can say that to set VE at 5 volts and still get our IQ of 1 milliamp using RE we can simply apply Ohm's law. And then we can start out by saying RE is equal to just what we have here one half VCC over IQ, and that's five volts over one milliamp or five K. So we now know that RE is equal to 5k and that is step one for step two we need to set the B our voltage at the base now our voltage at the base will be plus 0.06 for our quiescent conditions to match up now we can use a voltage divider and that's what we're gonna do it's really simple R1 and R2 the ratio, of course, is what is going to give us what we want. So to set our RB, we simply say, I'm sorry, VB <laughs> equals R, R2 over R1, and that is VB over VCC minus VB, or... The information we already have, VE plus 0.06 over VCC minus VE plus 0.06 volts. Now, you can make an approximation here and just let R1 equals R2. <clears throat> That's going to just forget about that little... 0.6 volt to drop and it's not really a big deal in most cases we basically want them to be at least one tenth or so of our DC input resistance at the base and this will prevent the voltage dividers output from lowering under load conditions so we're just going to let them be equal we're going to say R1 and R2 are both equal to 100k Okay, we'll put that up here. Okay. 
Are you with me so far? Good. So the next thing we need to do is uh, choose our AC coupling capacitors. Hey, focus. There you go, focus. Choose our AC coupling capacitors to block out our DC level and also on our unwanted uh, frequencies. And in this case, C1 is going to form kind of a high pass filter here as well. So we need to find our RN and our RN base AC as parallel. We're just going to kind of eh, skip over that. I'm not going to get into capacitor theory with you. There's, we can just kind of skip ahead. So what we're just going to do here is we are going to say 1 over Rn equals 1 over 100K plus 1 over 100K plus, this is the part I skipped, 1 over 190K. You could just go with 100K here again. Don't sweat it. It's not that big of a deal. Anyway, we get our Rn is equal to about 40K, okay? Now that we found our we can set our C1 at the frequency minus 3 dB point. We just have to have a capacitor value, and we can find that using another formula. We're not a paper here. So C1 would be equal to 1 over 2 pi. I know everybody's going, Ugh. Frequency dB R in or 1 over 2 pi. 100, that's hertz, times R 40K. Or it makes our high pass filter. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. It comes out to 0.5 microfarad. So that is our input. 0.5 microfarad. Okay? My bad. Bad math. 0.4 microfarad is our in. And then all we're left to find is our out. Excuse me. And to find our out, we use the same formula, except this changes to 3K, and this is going to give us about 1.47 microfarad. We'll just call it 0.5 microfarad. So there it is. You asked for it, you got it. I've been avoiding it because I didn't want to get into all the math. It's, I mean... If you want to get into a graduate level mathematics of this, there's even deeper we could go. Like I said, talking about the capacitor theory, but it's not necessary for what the guys at home are doing just messing around. You know, just keep in mind what I said here about setting your IQ, your VE, and your RE. Man, that's really all you got to worry about. This other stuff, you know, you don't have to worry about it at home. But I showed you, you asked for it, so... I hope you enjoyed it. If this helped out at all, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I am out. Peace. Thank you for all your support, everyone. 2020, I'm hoping, is going to be a great year for us. Everyone who's supported through Patreon and through PayPal donations is fantastic. Um, everybody who's bought something from the Amazon store, that's what keeps this channel going. I couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, you are a part of the team. Hey, feel free to email me, arduino0169 at gmail.com. I try and get back to just about everybody.